the uh, moderator for this session today. Um, just one item before we get started, um, we ask you to submit your questions for Q&A in the Q&A section. Um, question, questions will be queued in the order received. Uh, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. It is a pleasure to introduce you Vincent, uh, who is the head of Vinci Cert. He has been a speaker at first events before and has contributed to various open source tools in the past. Today, he will share his experience and learnings gathered when dealing with cyber rating companies. So I'm really looking forward to his talks and talk and now handing over to you, Winsor. Yeah, thank you. Hello to this, uh, to this, to this session. So uh, I, will, I will start, so this is a quick menu. Oops, the demo effect. Uh, so just a, a few words of introduction. Um, you will understand quickly that I'm French, so pardon me, my French accent. Um, I'm currently working at Vinci. Uh, I was uh, in NG uh, before, uh, doing my uh, first conference here. I've uh, spoke at many conferences, the first, but also Blue Hat, Black Hat, like in Paris, Rome Hack. Uh, but um, if you like uh, Active Directory, uh, I suggest you try Pink Castle. Uh, it's uh, getting uh, famous now. And if you don't know it, maybe you will uh, know my contribution to Mimikat. So uh, each time you will uh, open uh, Mimikat, you will see my name. So uh, it's me. Uh, I have uh, I just have to um, introduce my, my company. So I'm warning, warning you, there is a video which can be loud. So uh, watch, your, uh, watch your volume. And it's just a, a one minute introduction for my company. So just starting. Thank you. So uh, let's uh, let's start. So I'm here to talk about uh, cyber rating, and I think the, the first thing you you should ask uh, this is what is cyber rating. So uh, I think we should uh, put cyber rating in a continuity for the traditional financial scoring. I suppose everybody knows Standard Poor's, Fitch, or Moody's, uh, which was uh, used during the financial crisis. Uh, basically, this company uh, goes in, uh, you are, they are collecting information, and based on that, they are putting to you some, uh, some, uh, some financial rating, uh, a score from D to triple A. Uh, it's the same for cyber, uh, cyber security. Uh, we have seen many actors, for example, BitSight, uh, Cy Rating, or security scorecards. Um, it's the same, they are collecting information. Uh, which is mostly public, and based on that, they are making a score. Um, from from our standpoint, uh, it's a business trend because with this public information, we get get we can get a footprint of uh, what we are doing. So said otherwise, it is an efficient tool to discover the shadow IT. Uh, but uh, from a communication standpoint, uh, it is a representation of the security level of the Vinci Group. So you can see at the right. Uh, you get a picture of for CIO uh, explaining to all the uh, CFO of the group uh, why our score is not as good as uh, as can be, uh, and uh, the position with your competition. So a, he wanted to explain that uh, he needed to have more budget and, and things like that. 
Uh, there is a third point, which is a cyber insurance premium. Uh, we got a lot of ransomware uh, campaigns at the moment. And um, to be protected, to, to, to limit the financial loss, uh, most many companies are subscribing to, to an insurance. But this insurance, uh, they need to understand the level of risk and if we are good or not. So they, they need to collect information uh, to, to know if uh, we are good or not. Um, so this is uh, what uh, what's looked for. So uh, for one uh, cyber uh, company, so you can see you got the name of the company, you just get a score uh, and then you see the, the trend. Uh, for another company, it's the same. You see uh, your company, your score and uh, the, the trend. And for a third company, it's the same. Again, uh, you see your company name, you see your score and you see the, the trend. So basically for a CISO of a large company, uh, you get in a single indicator, the security level uh, for the one company. Um, always computed the rating. Uh, when you go into the interface, you find uh, many, many subscore, uh, which can be regrouped in many subcategories. So you can see, for example, for this one, uh, you got compromise system, diligence, user behavior, public disclosure, and then many uh, sub things. Uh, for this one, you can see uh, best practices or reputation. And for the last one, you see many, uh, many categories, for example, network security or patching cadence or uh, uh, endpoint uh, security. Uh, in short, if you try to want to summarize uh, what this company are checking, it's basically compliance, uh, compliance with some, uh, some rules, the SPF record and so on. And on the other one, on, and, and the other one is more about uh, the events, uh, typically act system, or if uh, your IP is listed in a, in a blacklist. Um, so what is the uh, business use for this, uh, for this uh, score? Um, you can use it for yourself, but you can also uh, use it for your supplier, or maybe you want to, uh, uh, for your budget, you want to assess the security of your competitor. Or maybe if you are planning to buy a company, you can ask a rating uh, for that. But if you pay attention to this rating, uh, you can see that uh, Microsoft that I uh, use for my, uh, my example, uh, they have a pretty bad score. So what I was expecting uh, is that, of course, Microsoft, they have Azure, they have all their customers. And um, the score is bad because of that. But I was surprised because uh, if I looked at the compliance with SPF, uh, you can see that for many uh, Microsoft uh, domains, uh, they have no, uh, no SPF. Maybe they have other protection, but they, are, they have no SPF. And because there is some uh, check with a certificate, I was able to find this example in France uh, with an old server uh, where the certificate has expired. And the question is, um, the score is used to assess the security level. So if I stick to it, I won't buy any service to Microsoft, but uh, will it be the reality? Microsoft has a bad score, but uh, they cannot be avoided when you want to, to develop your company. Um, so, Let's go into details and try to, to know how it's work, how it's working. I think it can be summarized in a three-step process. Uh, the first one is to uh, build the internet footprint. Basically, you have to collect all the IP, DNS, uh, everything that is used by the company. Then for each asset, you need to, to run scans to, to find out if they are complying with your, uh, uh, your rules or, or not. And then with all this information, you apply an algorithm and you build a global score. If you go into details, uh, you will find that for, for example, for Vinci, uh, you are expecting that uh, um, the cyber rating companies are going to Google, trying to find all your subsidiaries, find any uh, legal, uh, legal book to, to get to it. But in practice, uh, this is not what, uh, what we have seen. What we, what we feel is that this company, they, goes to, they go to your website, your corporate website. They are looking for a communication uh, website that can be referenced 
in your in your uh, in your corporate websites, or maybe if you have some address, uh, or if you have a financial report. Um, it's more using that because we, when we look at the domain names that are that are being reported in the in the tool, uh, we find out some domains which are referenced only on this website. And uh, you know you have the companies that you buy, uh, the company that you sold, and with that you can try to understand uh, what was the source and the information. And then once you got all the domain. Um, that are belonging to you. Uh, they are running a technical uh, algorithm to try to find all the IP um, related to that. For example, they can look at uh, with records. They can also use a certificate from transparency records uh, or passive DNS, for example. And they are doing uh, iterations with that. I mean, if you got uh, a DNS, you can then get an IP and then you are doing a reverse uh, DNS. And then you you do uh, a loop until you have found out uh, all the assets. Uh, but uh, we have to talk about the effectiveness of this uh, asset collection. Um, this after uh, having um, looked at the um, at the cyber rating companies about the results, uh, we we wanted to understand what was the assets behind. You can see, for example, at the at the top left. Uh, you have domain uh, which has expired, um, so you see all the marketing and so on. And, and basically, uh, the cyber uh, rating companies uh, they cannot see it. Uh, you can have also um, uh, issues made by the uh, communication department when they are uh, referencing uh, public uh, public website, which is part of the uh, community. Uh, you can see also uh, another way, uh, another kind of domain which has expired, which is domain reuse. So uh, what we see typically in Asia, uh, they need to have a, a good, a good rating uh, regarding proxies to be able to not be filtered out, and so they are looking for domains which expired. And uh, this website is a gambling website. Uh, at the left, you have the classic uh, uh, servers, which has been reset. Uh, in the middle, you can find also um, uh, phishing, uh, uh, phishing domain, which is close to your uh, website, uh, which is then uh, added into the, um, into the cyber rating companies. Or at the right, uh, you have uh, everything about the DNS, everything is good, uh, the DNS did not, not expire, but you just remove one server and you forgot to remove the DNS record. As a consequence, this IP is, uh, this IP is reused and then your DNS record points to a website that doesn't belong to you. So basically you have a, a lot of garbage. Um, I wanted to, to compare what the provider see in order to, to understand if their view was consistent or no. I think uh, the view is consistent. Uh, in this example, of course, it's TLP wide, so there is uh, no company. Um, you got one company which is very centralized. Uh, at the right, another one which is very decentralized. At the bottom, a mix. You know, when you have uh, two companies which are uh, being merged together, you can, you can find the, the different clusters. And if you look at this uh, uh, graphical representation, I think it's quite accurate. But then when you compare the number of assets uh, among uh, different cyber rating companies, uh, it's very different. I mean, uh, for this uh, company in the middle, for one provider, it was 90,000. Uh, from another one, it was 9,000. And for another one, it was only 900. So uh, we have to be very cautious about that. Um, and if you want the explanation, basically you have some IP range, some IP range and for the last company they didn't pick all the DNS records. Um, when you have a large organization, your goal, uh, I think it's to manage the shadow IT. So every, every time you get a problem, you want to, to see, okay, this is, um, something you have to deal with. Uh, I need to call this guy. 
And uh, sadly, for these cyber rating companies, they don't care about resolution. Uh, their business model is to provide score not to, to solve the problem. So there is almost uh, no transversal views. That means that you get all the data in, in an Excel file and that's all. Um, one company is providing some kind of tree. Um, the other can share and access all the data transversally. And the last one, you have uh, many, uh, many scores cards, but uh, you have to look at each score cards to get uh, all the data. So it's very difficult to have a transversal view. You have a lot of false positives. Uh, typically, when you are selling your company and it's, made, it's not made public, uh, the cyber rating company don't know it. Or if you want to buy some company, uh, they, they are not aware of it. Uh, some companies can add it. I uh, remind about one company which uh, don't want to add uh, companies like that. It's very difficult. And you have also a difficulty to, to contextualize uh, your scoring. I can give you an example. If someone is visiting your premises and uh, you want to give them some Wi-Fi access, you will use uh, a Wi-Fi guest so they can not uh, use your infrastructure. But maybe the IP uh, seen from the internet of this of this guy uh, belong to your uh, to your network, so it will be counted as a problem if if the guy has some some malware. A typical example is uh, for all infrastructures, for example, an airport, uh, if they are starting some ISP activities, uh, as a customer for their ISP activities, every bad practices, it will be counted against the main companies. And I checked with uh, most 10 large companies, they have at least two or three examples like that. Um, so you want to manage your shadow IT, you can have some, some view, but it may not match your uh, what you see internally. Um, as I said, you have two kinds of uh, data collection. The first one is about malware. So what we can see is that there is mainly uh, two kinds of, uh, of sources. Uh, the first one is a syncalling. The second one is a blacklist. So syncalling, as a reminder, is that you, you get a malware, you reverse it, you understand, OK, uh, the, the malware will try to reach this domain, this domain, this domain, and the, the bad guy adjusts to, to register for one. So you will register one of these domains and you are waiting for the connection. So with this IP, you, you, you match your customer. So two providers out of three are using this technique. And for the blacklist, I found out that two providers out of three, but not the same, are using a blacklist. So this one, uh, they are uh, trying to find if your uh, IP is on a blacklist, for example, Spamos, but it's noisy or frustrating if you are using shell sting. And uh, the blacklist source selection is questionable. Uh, for the syncalling, it's uh, very effective if the IP in, is uh, in the official range uh, you are managing, but you are missing the, the proxy cloud or, or non-public IP. Also, because this uh, bad things, it's only an event and it's not continuous. Uh, the uh, cyber rating provider has to give more impact on this. Uh, on this. Uh, for the compliance, uh, in short, uh, it's quite the same uh, because they are looking for the DNS records, they are looking for the TLS configuration, they are looking for the web alert. However, um, at a given, uh, at a specific uh, evaluation, it's different. For example, for the SPF, uh, some companies did some, uh, it's not ranking the same. If you have a question mark all or a tilde all or a minus all, also, if you remove, you say, okay, it's a bad a server, I just remove it. Uh, some company considers that the scan wasn't successful and you can have this anomaly up to three months uh, after having fixed it. So it's basically the same, but presented differently. Um, I have also made the exercise to compare the scoring of one company uh, with many provider. Um, you can see at the top uh, the number of assets that uh, everybody can, uh, that all the, the companies can see. At the bottom, you can see the individual score. 
and uh, the final score at the bottom. What you can find out is that um, uh, the evaluation is it's not the same for a specific company, but if you look uh, at the different provider of the same provider, uh, but for a different company, you will find out that the evaluation is quite the same. And what we have seen is that the lower uh, the company is, the best the rating is, because when you are bigger, you add up everything you have in the smallest company, and then you get a, a very bad score. Um, if we are doing a root, a root cause analysis for the bad score regime, most of the time, uh, the bad score is linked to 60% uh, for malware, malware in double code, because it can be blacklist, uh, aka a share ghosting, or it can be sync calling, or it can be uh, things like that. Uh, for 30%, it's more about uh, shadow IT. Um, what I'm calling shadow IT is mostly uh, marketing websites. You know, the website uh, put for cheap uh, for 10 euros a, a year. And only 10% uh, is related to uh, what you are doing locally. So uh, given this, uh, this facts, how can you handle uh, the cyber rating and, uh, and improve it? So um, I think you, you need to pay attention to two facts. What is the compliance and what is the security? Uh, compliance, you have to fix it even if it is stupid. And security, you have to fix it because it provides additional mitigation. And uh, even it is it is in listing, you may have uh, another workaround. Uh, in practice, it's uh, more like that. Uh, you, you present it to the management. The management uh, is not okay. And you have to speak with, uh, with the guy below. And uh, in practice, there is no change one, three, six months, uh, six months after. It's a, it's a human problem. So before starting the project, what I recommend is to work on the scope. Uh, basically what I have done is just uh, check that the domain assigned to you belongs to you. And uh, for the cleanup, you have to report uh, or remove all the DNS records for uh, all things, or maybe you have a blacklist uh, record, which is 10 years old. Um, then uh, you have to do some uh, project steering. You have to go to the management and then explain what you are going to do. If you don't, uh, the management will expect that you feel uh, you fix 80% of the problem in, in three months. In real life, it's more about three or two to three years. Uh, so this is what I have done uh, to, my, uh, to my management. Uh, to lead a project, we need, uh, what I recommend is to do uh, four things. The first one is a lot of webinar to explain to everyone uh, what is the problem, why, you, why you, we need to fix and what we can do in order to fix it. Because if you just put uh, um, directive asking to fix it, uh, people won't spend the energy to, to fix a problem they don't understand. Uh, then to provide uh, support, um, what we have done is that we have, uh, we can, uh, our team is providing support either technical or either in terms of escalation. Um, we are in the holding, so we can, we, we have a lot of power. Uh, the med to, then to provide, to create a remediation kit, uh, when you want to fix the SPF each time, uh, people, we start to, to write the document 20 times. Uh, so you need to provide it before the project. And then at the end, uh, provide a dashboard, which is a representative of their effort. Because okay. if you stick to the score, it won't work. We have about four minutes left, just for you. Okay, I will uh, speed up. Uh, so this is an example of remediation kit, just a, a Word document. Uh, this is an example of dashboard. So you want to benchmark your um, entity. You want to check at the left if they are aware of this project. And then you select only a few checks uh, to know if it's okay or not. If you don't, if you stick to the local score, uh, it will be better than the group score and you won't get any advance. And this is an example of uh, what's going on for one year. At the first step, uh, you can see that there is some cleaning. So the score is improving. You don't do anything. Uh, then on this phase, uh, there is some cleanup. So you see there is a lot of increase. Uh, then you can see uh, at the top, it's all the subsidiary and at the bottom, it's the group. Uh, this is a lower score. It's, uh, it's normal because you, you take all the problem for all the things. And you can see that, for example, this BU has decided to add more assets 
and as a consequence, their scores are, are decreasing. Uh, but there is no huge improvement because once you fix an issue, another one appears. Um, and if you want to, to improve your score, you can choose to have a security by obscurity. So if you want to hide, uh, my advice is to not use a public IP for your proxy. Do not use an IP in a, in a, in a network that, uh, that uh, you own. And please don't set a DNS record for this IP. So this time, uh, the, the cyber rating company won't be able to see you, uh, but uh, you won't get uh, additional security. Uh, time for my, my conclusion. Um, does, a, does a good cyber rating score trigger a bigger security? Uh, except the SPF or the sinkhole, I don't think so. Uh, can you really act on your score? On 80% of the report, it's difficult to act. Uh, you have shared hosting or the application and the feedback uh, on the teams uh, is that there was a lot of energy spent for small results. So the two are not fully mature. Uh, is it just about compliance? Uh, there are more and more cloud exposure tools, even a person who can think about uh, have admin point, for example. But with, uh, with uh, your cloud exposure I, and your cyber insurance premium, I think that these tools will merge into a, a cloud exposure solution, uh, that I'm, which is basically the cyber rating companies. And I'm done. Cool. I think we have one minute left. So maybe let's get at least one question uh, out. Um, there was one question. Do you think there is any value in using cyber rating companies to evaluate third party vendors? Or do they show a false representation of security maturity or security risk? Uh, we have spent some money on that, but I don't think it will change the, the buying decision. Okay. Uh, then let's maybe do the other one as well. Um, it was from Anonymous. Uh, last time I checked out a cyber rating company they were not doing a good job at examining uh, public cloud workload as they were mainly looking at IP addresses range registered in the name of the company being rated. What is your view on the relevance of cyber rating for companies going cloud first? It's not very efficient. It's very efficient when you have uh, your network range, which is public and so on. So it's mostly for a company which has a lot of uh, legacy, uh, legacy tunnel. For that, it's very efficient. You just pay once, you get your dashboard with all your company and you're good. So with Cloud First company, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't think it's a, it would be a good idea. Cool. Thank you very much, Maison. Um, Thank you. That wrapped up all our questions. I think back to Josh. All right, thanks everyone. I'm gonna end this session and then please log back in to your next session session that you're registered for. All right, thank you.